Welcome. In this section, we start to talk about what you do in the business plan as you are describing your various products and services. What is it that, it, that your company is providing to customers? I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to remember that you are not just creating a product that makes customers happy. You are creating a product that makes customers happy for the purpose of creating a business or for making money. It could have a social benefit, but by and large, the simplest way to talk about this problem or this what you're trying to accomplish is that you're trying to make a profit, you're trying to make money. You want to pre present your product and services, not so much from the customer's point of view and why that it makes their lives wonderful, although that's an important driver. What you really want to talk about is you do that and you have this value proposition for the purpose of generating profit, growing cash, growing your business and creating an investment that will make re huge returns for both yourself as a, as a founder, but also for investors that come along for the ride. So let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. What is it that you're offering? You want to talk about the specific product that you are providing for customers. You're trying to talk about it in terms of the value it provides to customers what exactly it is, what the unit is that you're selling. If you're selling a product and it might some be something someone just buys off the shelf or off a website, that is simply your unit. If you're selling a, um, uh, a new kind of clothing, you each time someone buys one, that's a unit, right? But if it's a service or it's software or if it's something else, then it becomes a little more complicated in terms of figuring out what your units are. So you want to describe specifically what your company offers. Product, services, maybe there's a service component that is attached to the product. Not only do you sell the software, but you sell support to the software, or you sell data for the software. Or if it's a video game you're developing, not only do you sell the, a copy of the game, you, you sell updates, or in the game you also sell products that people can purchase with real money, or something along those lines. So that's what you're trying to describe. You also describe your key attributes of the product. Why is anyone buying it? Where is it? Is it the quality? Is it the pricing? What is it about the product that people, that makes it different and differentiated from competition? What are the things that are important salient purchase points for customers that are going to buy your product? How are you going to get that product developed? How are all of those attributes going to be measured? How are you going to find customers that support them? Then you talk about your planned enhancements. Not only do you start with a product, you can't just put it out there and it's done. You have to continually update it because your one of your objectives is not only to have a product that succeeds in the market, but a business that grows over time. So you put your enhancements in place and how you might price for additional features, how you price your product, how you might increase or decrease your prices, how, might, how you might have bundled pricing, how all of those things might work. So that is describes the units you're selling, what sort of revenue you're going to get for those units and how that might grow over time as the product is enhanced. In addition to that, the revenue side, we're in it to make money. So you have to figure out what the cost elements are. What does it cost to make the product? How do you assign the cost of running your business and creating your product to the unit that you sell. If you're manufacturing something like a piece of clothing, for example, you might have a manufacturer make it for you for $5 and you sell it for $30. Well, that's your cost, but you also have distribution costs, you have quality control you have to look through. So there's other cost elements as well. So you wanna try and capture all of those as you think through what your products and services are. If you're doing a service, like, for example, you're doing a, uh, a car detailing operation or something like that or a landscaping business um, or some other kind of service that's planned, a hair care or whatever. You then say, what are the some of the cost elements of that? How long does it take to do a particular car? What about the materials that you need? The time, of course, is pay. You have to pay someone to do that to be if it's a if it's a salon, you have to pay for a hair cutter. Or, and you have to pay for the materials, the shampoos and all the other things that are being used. You have to pay, you have to have a seat that has to be utilized. Someone can sit there and have their, uh, their hair cared for. 
all of those elements you have to, to make sure that you understand so you know what it costs to provide the service that you're getting the revenue for. Okay, so those are the cost elements. To the extent your business is not ready to launch, you have to talk about how you're going to develop your product, how you'll develop your service, who's going to do the various parts. You're going to hire a contractor, do it yourself, hire experts. Experts in many areas are kind of can be difficult to find. Generally, a better option for a startup is to subcontract as much as you possibly can. Even if you're doing car detailing, sometimes it's better to subcontract even the work of detailing the car to another group that might be doing that, if indeed you have a specific market contact or marketing plan. You could always bring those skills in-house when you want to maybe make a little more money or manage the quality or other service attributes. But you want to start generally by trying to contract as much as you can. They're experts. You buy it as a unit. You don't have to work on all the details. You don't have to learn all the the uh, intricacies of delivering that product or service if you can subcontract it. Things to think about. And, all, and it's also very useful to have for each of your products a nice competitive matrix that says if you're doing, for example, a video game, it talks about, you might talk about the various uh, platforms that you're on and then some competitive games and what they offer that you don't offer and what you offer that they don't offer. And ideally, the things that you offer you should try to describe why you feel like customers are willing to pay you for those things that other people don't have. So this nice competitive matrix could be a nice graphic or a nice uh, figure to include in your product and services discussion. All right. So that's what you want to have when somebody finishes reading your product and services section. You want them to be thinking, oh, okay, now I understand it. I understand what they're selling. I understand what customers are going to be purchasing and why. I understand what it costs them to do it so I can see where they're making money. What I want to understand now is how big is this market? How many people are going to actually buy this? Uh, who are the people who are going to buy it? What do they look like? And so what we'll do is talk next in our next lecture about the markets and the marketing. It'll just be an overview because we have an entire lecture series on the market. But for now, we'll just talk about an overview in the very next lecture. And we'll uh, see you there. In, um, in the lecture on markets and marketing.